towards the end of uh, the year 1941, the Germans established a ghetto in Vilnius, and the whole Jewish population that was still alive at the time moved into the ghetto. The population of Vilnius, when the Germans came in, it was about 80,000. And Vilnius, of course, was one of the major cultural centers of the Jewish people in Europe. Uh, I was at the time uh, 12 years old, yes. Uh, so uh, I was essentially a child. But fortunately, I was a tall child. I was tall. And when we came close to the uh, soldier who was separating uh, the children from the grown-ups, my father pulled me up, uh, simply pulled me up. That I stood on my uh, on my uh, on my feet, uh, and uh, that added a few centimeters to my height, and we just passed by the soldier without saying anything, without looking at him, and it worked. So uh, after all, on the the 29th of September 1943, we arrived to Kloga. And we continued clear, clearing uh, the land and God knows how many boulders were cleared and how many trees were cut. There were two problems. that uh, the, the work that uh, the German demanded was extremely uh, inhuman. And the other problem was that the, the food uh, rations which they were given were starvation rations. My father was exhausted and hungry and I was hungry and uh, we didn't know what to do in order to get food. So uh, there, were one, there were two ways uh, to get food. Buying, we couldn't because we didn't have money. Uh, the other one was just going out to the villagers and asking them for food. And uh, in many uh, cases, they did. My father did that and they did give us food. This is Christmas Eve and uh, I am here with my son and we are both very hungry and we have nothing to eat and I'm sure that uh, you probably have a son too and you wouldn't want him to go hungry. Uh, and the Estonian officer looked at him and he was at first he didn't know really what to say. And he went out and he came back and he brought a whole loaf of bread. Now a whole loaf of bread was uh, a, a treasure. So he thanked him very much and he went back. But uh, no one has to know my father uh, to uh, understand what he did next. He said, well, I'm here already. So I might as well find the Russian and see uh, whether I can get something from him too. And he did find the Russian, and the Russian did give him some uh, bread, and uh, in a few minutes the German came, and he told him the same story. Uh, Christmas, and uh, my son, and we are hungry, and we have nothing to eat. This is Christmas Day, maybe you can help us to celebrate Christmas. So the officer, uh, you know, according to my father, the. Uh, he, he was almost speechless, but he said, wait. And he went out and he came back and he brought some bread and some sweets and something else. I think a few potatoes, if I remember correctly, and gave it to him. And he said, now go back to the camp, but be careful not to be caught. So my father now was already in, as happy as one can be. He went back to the camp and he told me the story and we had a uh, tremendous uh, uh, Christmas and several days after. As we came close to the camp, uh, we were still on the road. Entrance to the camp was to the left and we were still on the road. And uh, we saw that there were people on the road uh, and there were people in the camp, but they wouldn't let us into the camp. It took about uh, 25 minutes, or something like that. Uh, the truck came, a truck came back and took another load of people and went away. And uh, then another truck came, took the people and went away. And this continued con all the time. So the truck came uh, and started taking people from the road. And I was with my father, we were close to the, being the first on the truck. 
And as always, my father said no. He took my, me by my hand and took me back to be further away. And this is continued to, for as long as possible until it was already evening and the truck came and we were all the only ones left. There were, there were some women left and, there was, uh, and we were as the men left. So one truck took the women and went and then another truck, they loaded us into the other truck and we went and, there was, and that was the end of the camp in Lagedi. But what was happening to the people, we didn't know. And uh, the truck stops. The truck stops and we hear uh, that the Germans who were driving our truck came out and talked to the Germans. Uh, there was a truck in front of us. They, what happened is that the women's truck broke down and the driver of the women's truck wanted our driver to help him to fix his truck. And then uh, the trucks started moving. Okay, uh, they started moving and uh, they went for another maybe 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. And we heard a conversation which uh, said something to the effect, ah, but they sind zu spät gekommen. Uh, you came too late. Uh, we are finished for today. A few days later, we found out what happened. And uh, what saved us is a broken truck. Truck broke, we came too late, the Germans are very pedantic, it's too late, and they finish their work. At around four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the group of German Germans came, some Gestapo, and they started uh, uh, taking groups of 30 people. They took a group of 30 people, they took them out from the camp, uh, they went with them, and uh, in uh, a matter of 15, 20 minutes, we heard, we heard shots. But once we heard the shots, we already knew what's happening. And we knew uh, what's uh, awaiting us. So we, uh, there's nothing we could do. Uh, barbed wire around, guards around. It's not like anywhere you can just walk out. You, you, you can't do anything here uh, to escape. Uh, another group taken away, more shots. Another group taken away, more shots. And every time it gets closer to me and to my father, my father takes me and takes me back. He's talking to me all the time. What can we do? Where can we hide? And there's only one place where we can hide. And that's inside the building. We are about 50 meters from the entrance to the building. So all we need to do is to run the 50 meters and get into the building. Uh, but there are Germans all around and there are guards all around. Uh, and we tried to do it and they saw us. And they saw us and they started shooting and we had to go back. What can we do? What can we do? Uh, so, and we wait. It, it's getting darker, much darker. And we see that the, the, the Germans are becoming a little more frantic. They're becoming a lot more nervous for some reason. They, they, they're yelling, they're talking to each other, they're arguing with each other. And they, we didn't know what was going on, but we knew that something is going on because they are getting angry. So we thought to myself, if they are getting angry, that's going to be bad for us. But finally, uh, it reached a point where suddenly my father, I didn't even notice it, but my father suddenly picked me, he picked my hand. He ran with me directly into the building, into the entrance of the building. Uh, hoping that this time we will be able to get in because they were too busy arguing with each other and counting people and this sort of thing. And we did. The next day we said, all right, we are, we are now going out to see what happens. So my father and I, I don't know where we got, where we got the strength, but we did go out and then we realized that there were people in uniform. And the question was whether that was a German uniform or whether that was a Russian uniform. And we soon saw, we, we stood, we stood and waited. 
and uh, we saw that uh, it was a Russian uniform. I started crying. Uh, I don't know how my, my father felt, but I'm sure that he felt uh, similarly. And then the Russians came and there were three Russian officers who saw us uh, standing on the field and crying. And uh, he, uh, he, they looked at us and they said, don't worry, we'll catch those bastards. We'll catch them. And then we continued to our uh, walk to find what happened to the rest of the people. And we walked another 100, 200 meters. I may be wrong, uh, the meters here. And uh, we came to a place which uh, on which we saw th three platforms, wooden platforms, which were about six meters by six meters, so six meters by seven meters. The platform was made out of wood. What uh, they did is on top of that wood, they put people and they shot them while they were lying on the wood. When they filled that platform with the shot people, they put on top of the people another platform, and on that they put another uh, group of people. They shot them. This is what happened to the thousands of people from Kloga camp that were murdered on that one day. And that was the end of the story of Kloga. And that was the end of the story of the Vilnius Jews.